rock, <coughs> but that you would be obedient to the Word of God. Just like every other chapter in this book so far, that's all it was, was just be obedient to the Word of God. This is what you're supposed to do. Whether you like it or not, He's God, you're not, do it. That's where the blessings come when you're obedient, right? So just do it. And so this is all about money, right? But how do you do it? It's not the prosperity gospel. It's not that the preacher should be driving a brand new Lincoln or driving a brand new 300C or maybe a Dodge Challenger. Couldn't resist. Okay, so this is the deal. It's not about getting rich. It's not about your own private jet. It's not about millions of dollars. It's not about, a, yeah, you should give all your money to the building campaign so we can build this big monster, right? It's not about that. Although I have to say that people across the whole country, across the whole world, who will not pay that pastor that much money, they will spend thousands of dollars, they'll save up for years, and they will take their family to Disney, and they will spend thousands of dollars to go in there and to ride on these rides that suck, that maybe last 90 seconds, they cost 20 million bucks to build, I just spit on you, sorry, right? And they'll do that so that all these executives and all these people give me millions, or they'll take their kid to a magic game, and what is it, a buck and a half to go to a magic game now? Why, so Dwight Howard can make 20 mil? And that's okay. But heaven forbid we have a nice church, right? Or heaven forbid the pastor makes any money. You can't, so what's happened is people don't want to, they, they cringe about the money because so many pastors have gone, so many churches too, have gone on the opposite end of the spectrum where they just dump all kinds of money into the bishop, right? The bishop's coming to town, do another offering or, or two or three or four. Got to help him make sure he's got a nice suit. Got to make sure he's got a nice car, needs a pinky ring, so let's just keep putting that plate out. We've got to collect money from him, right? But that's not what it's about. You see, Paul tells us this. Look, he tells us exactly how the preacher should get paid. He says in verse 3, he says, This is my answer to those who examine me. Isn't that what people do? They examine the pastor. They don't look in the mirror. They look at the pastor. What's he doing, man? What's he doing, man? What's he doing, man? What's he doing in there all day? He's not working hard like me. He's got, his, he's got no dirt between his nails. There. That's he's drinking coffee. Right? He's drinking coffee. That's all he does all day. Drink coffee. Right? Yeah. <laughs> amen. That was a good place for amen. Okay, listen. Look at He says this. He says, for those who examine me, don't we have the right to live in your homes and share your meals? Now, he was a single dude, right? Paul's a single dude, right? He had no, no wife, no kids. So what's he saying here? I don't need millions. Can I just come over for some dinner? I just want something to eat, man. I need a place to sleep. I need a place to crash. Right? I need a place to crash. I need something to eat, nothing much. Don't we have the right to bring a Christian wife with us, as the other disciples and the Lord's brothers do, and as Peter does? Right? What he's saying here is, listen, the Bible tells us that we're supposed to like be fruitful and multiply, and it's not good for a man to be alone. We should love Ephesians 5.25. Love your wives like Christ loved the church. Right? So we're, why, why, can't we, why can't he have a, a wife? Right? But the problem is that wives, I hate to say it, I love you, but they, it costs money, right? It costs money. I'm not joking around, but it costs money because, like, like, you got to double the electric, and you got to double the water, and you got to quadruple the shampoo, right? That's what happens. No, uh, I love you. She's awesome. We buy suave. Okay, so listen, <laughs> listen. It costs money, right? But if you, the more people you have in your home, it costs money. But he says, be fruitful and multiply. Make little Christians. Raise your kids up in the way of the Lord, right? Teach them, teach them, teach them, teach them, and have a wife that you love. It's not good for a man to be alone. So, you know what? That dude, if he's burning with lust, he deserves a wife. All right, go get a wife. That's what we learn, right? So if everyone else can do it, well, why can't I? Paul's like, why, why can't I? I can't even, I don't even have the basic necessities to have the basic things in life. I just want a wife and a family. Is that too much to ask? I just want something to eat and a place to lay my head. That, that's what he's asking for. He's not asking for millions of dollars, right? He's not asking for millions of dollars. He's just asking for a little love. He's just asking for a little love. So what type of salary would you ask? What type of salary? Now, what type I'm of salary? Case, if you catch me. What type of salary? You ask. Ah, oh, you're all awake. Okay, good. He gives us some examples here. Look. Look at chapter 9. Look at verse 7, okay? He starts giving us some examples of how the pastor should get paid. He says, what soldier, he gives four examples. Okay, first one's the soldier. What soldier pays his own expenses? Now think, think about it for a second. You see on TV the ads for the, you guys are in the service, right? You're in the service, right? Okay, you go on the, on the TV and there's a, you know, the proud, the few of the proud of the Marines and the Army, be all you can be. Okay, now you come to the recruiter's office because it looks great. You go to the recruiter's office and he says, okay, you got to buy your own uniform, you got to buy your own boots, you got to buy your own gun, you got to buy your own bullets, you got to buy your own knife, you got to buy your own food, you got to buy your own water, pay for your own lodging, we're going to throw you up there in the front lines, you're probably going to die, and by the way, you're not getting paid. Yeah, let's sign up for that one. 
Let's sign up. We have to reinstate the draft, wouldn't we? Okay, there's no one's going to sign up for that stupid gig. It's awful. So he's saying, hey, what, what soldier has to pay his own expenses? He should get, what well, he says he should get some. He should get some, right? Watch this. He talks about the farmer planting the vineyard. He says, what, what, plant, what, what farmer? And they're hard workers, those farmers, right? Up early, stay up late, cows mooing, roosters ch chuckling, whatever they do. He's working like crazy, right? He's in his suspenders. They're working like crazy, dust to dawn, right? And, and this is what happens. What farmer goes out that does all that work, plants a vineyard, it says, and then doesn't get to enjoy some of the fruit, some of the harvest? Some. Not all. Just some. He just wants a little something, right? So what happens if the farmer goes out and he's got all this, all the orange groves over there? Is he not allowed to have a stinking orange? I mean, seriously? You can't have an orange. Everyone else can come over, jump the fence, steal the oranges and eat it. That's okay, but I can't have one. It's not right. It's not right. He goes on, he starts talking about the shepherd, right? He says, what shepherd tends the flock all day and night and sacrifices his time and resources and himself, and he doesn't get to enjoy some of the milk. And the last one he's talking about, you can read it, look in your Bibles, he talks about the oxen. You know, don't muzzle the oxen so that when he's out there threshing the grain, and he's working, he's, he's, he's preparing the grain for harvest, don't muzzle him so he can't eat. Is it so that he'll eat all of it? Or is it so he can eat some of it? I just need something to eat, dude. The guy's like starving to death. I just want some food. Take me to Bob Evans. This is something, right? Just give me something to eat. That's all I'm asking for. So it's not, it's, it's, not, it's not that I'm supposed to be a prosperity gospel guy where everyone's supposed to be paying me. I'm the pastor. Look at me. It's, he says, he says, some of the harvest, some of the milk, some of the grain. Just help me a little bit. Look in verse 11. Look in verse 11. I'm having a hard time seeing it. Okay? He says this. He's a farmer. He's a shepherd. He's done all that. He says this in verse 11. Since we, talking to himself, have planted spiritual seed among you, aren't we entitled to a harvest of physical food and drink? So what is he asking for? The basic necessities. He just wants the basic necessities. He's not asking for a lot. He wants food, drink, a place to sleep. He wants a wife, maybe a couple of kids. No big deal. He's not, he just wants basic cable. He doesn't want all the channels. You know what I'm saying? He's not asking for a lot. He just wants his basic necessities taken care of. That's what the church should take care of for the pastor. Now, the church went crazy a while back and went prosperity. The pastor, give him lots of money. He's got all the fanciest stuff, right? So what happens? Naturally, when the, when the rubber band gets stretched that far over here, what happens? It starts going back this way, right? So there's people that took a radical approach to that. They didn't like it. Like the book Radical, the David Platt book, where he's ever, if you're a Christian, you gotta be broke, man. You gotta be broke. The pastor's gotta give it all away, man. Gotta give it all away. Christians should be just so humble and modest, they should give it away. Heaven forbid someone who's a pastor should have any money. Give it away. Look, Jesus didn't have a home. Paul didn't have a home. So you're not supposed to have a home, and our church should have dirt floors and, and clay mounds to sit on. They went extreme and radical. Listen, it's not supposed to be like that either for the poor preacher man. I heard someone say this, don't ever make the preacher live on more faith than you're willing to. You know what I'm saying? Why, why is it that we should be able to work hard and make a good living and that's okay, but the preacher can't? He has to live by faith. Well, what about you? What about the people? Why can't they live on faith? Just like you're insisting that the pastor does, okay? So he says this, he says, listen, Am I not as free as anyone? I have divine rights just like all other Christians, right? Here's the divine right that the pastor has. And it says it right here in verse 14. Verse 14 of chapter 9 says this. The Lord ordered that those who preach the good news should be supported by those who benefit from it. Pretty self-explanatory, okay? But you have to know something. If you look in verse 12, Paul says this, and I say this, we have never used this right. Why? We would rather put up with anything than to be an obstacle to the good news about Christ. That's why I've never accepted a paycheck to the church. Because of impropriety in the church. Because people steal from the church. Because pastors go bad. And because people just suck money from their congregation for their own well-being and their own glory and their own fame and fortune. And because TV evangelists are sucking money out of people all the time, and because of the prosperity gospel, because people cringe at the thought of the pastor making money, they run from the church. Is, is that of anything to do with Jesus? No. 
but it causes people to run from Jesus. And so Paul says, I, wouldn't, I didn't take any money because I didn't want to get in the way of people coming to Christ. That's why I don't do it. That's why I've never taken any money. That's why I told you last week, I've, I don't take a drink. Never take a drink. My divine right is to have a drink. I can have a glass of wine right here, right now, no sin. You all know this, right? It says it there. But if you've come into this church and you don't know that right, and I'm up here pounding a, a beer, which I could do. I mean, there really would be nothing wrong with me having a beer right here. I think I should. No, I'm not going to do it. Okay? <laughs> I could go for it right now. I'm dry, right? But if you walk in here and you see me drinking a beer, what in the world are you going to think about me in this church? You're, well, you might come back again. <laughs> Chances are you'd be with friends, so it might work. <laughs> Belly up, everybody. No, I'm just kidding, Amen. right? No, but you know what I'm saying? So you, do, you don't do stuff that's going to cause people to run from Jesus. And that's why I don't drink. And that's why I've never taken a check before. So Paul never did, okay? He never did. The problem is, is this, this, there's always this one or two apples in the bushel that ruin the bushel, right? That's what happens. And so they ruin the people's, uh, the preacher's opportunity to receive a check because he doesn't want to do something that's going to keep people from Jesus, okay? Now, I've got to say this. This chapter isn't about me or Paul you know, demanding uh, uh, money from a church. It, it's, about, it's about the church and how it's supposed to respond to the Word of God, okay? How does the church of Jesus Christ respond themselves, you guys. It's not about me, okay? It's not about me. Jesus is on a mission to change the world, and he chose us to get it done, right? So the local church has to be engaged with the culture. You have to be engaged with the people out there. And I know, and you know, that not everybody is called to be a preacher. Not everyone is an absolute Jesus freak. You may call yourself a Christian, but not everyone's going to do what I'm doing. I understand that. There's churches all over the landscape where there's a guy in there who's just crazy about God, and he's given his life to it, like every waking moment. And most people are not like that, although it would be nice, okay? But they're not. So if the church has to be engaged with the community, what you do is you pay your pastor, and it frees the man up to be able to go and do that. He is a total Jesus freak. Every minute, every day, that's what he thinks about. He's thinking about scripture. He's thinking about the people. He's crying when the people... Hey, listen, when the people come and they, they, they accept Christ and you baptize them and they disappear, it makes them weep. It drives them crazy. Where is this person? Where is it? It drives... Listen, voice of experience. I don't know how you guys feel when there's no one here, when, when someone doesn't show. But I notice every single person that's not here. And I'm sorry that I don't notice who is here. It's probably a fault. But you know what I'm noticing? Who's not here. And it drives me crazy because I think maybe they've fallen. Maybe they're not in, in Jesus' arms. Maybe they're not serving him right now. Maybe they're not worshiping him. Maybe they're doing wrong. Maybe they're hurt. Maybe they're scared. I don't know what it is, but it drives me crazy. And what happens is if the church responds well to God's command here to take care of the one who preaches the good news, it frees him up to go and do those things, okay? It frees him up to, to organize his team. So that more people are here doing it, right? Going out and doing the work of the ministry. It helps them to, uh, to, 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 to preach and teach more often, more classes, more discipling. So that he doesn't have to be digging ditches and, and raking leaves, but he's actually meeting with the men. And he's preaching to them and teaching them and discipling them so that they can love God and serve him in a greater way. That's what he does. He's supposed to equip the, the people. See, that's another part of the job description. Look at it in the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Look at verse 11. Tell me when you're there. Okay, look, more job description for the, for the dude behind the pulpit. He says, these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. He starts listing the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, pastors, teachers, right? The leaders of the church. What's their responsibility? The responsibility is to equip God's people to do God's work and build up the church, the body of Christ. That's his job. His job is to equip the people to get out there and do the work of the ministry so more people can meet Jesus, more people can study his word, more people can love him, and more people can replicate themselves, more disciples, more Christians, the kingdom of God grows. That's his job. That's what he's supposed to do. Preaching and teaching and, 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 and disciple.